Now there's a popular perception that with the advent of drones and satellite imagery and high-tech geophysics, that pretty soon we won't even need to send geologists out into the field. But this outcrop here is a classic example of why we're still going to need boots on the ground and hammers on outcrops for some considerable time. When I start mapping in a new area, I usually start with the best available interpretive map and then I refine that each day with all the data that I collect from the outcrops. In this case, that initial starting interpretive map was compiled from satellite imagery, aeromagnetic data, uranium, thorium and potassium radiometrics and some hyperspectral data. And on that interpretive map, this outcrop was a dolerite. Now, kind of looks like a dolerite. It's dark brown and it sticks up a bit and it's got a good magnetic anomaly. But it isn't. In fact, it's a quartzite. You can't get a rock that's that much different to a dolerite than a quartzite. So how did they get it that far wrong? Well, it's brown because it's got a stockwork of sulphide veinlets in it that have oxidized to put a lot of iron oxides on the surface. And inside, it's got a whole bunch of secondary magnetite alteration, and that's made it magnetic. So from space, it actually does look like a dolerite. But on the ground, this is actually a whole lot more interesting than a dolerite. Yeah, you could argue that that's a real anomaly and, you know, those doesn't happen very often and that's true enough. But the fact is that ore deposits are anomalies, really strange anomalies, and they're the things you're looking for. So when I'm working on a place like this, I take it that the map, the interpretive map from the satellite imagery, the geophysics and all the other things is a really useful guide to get started but I look for the bits where they got it wrong and I hit them with a hammer. 